Um, let's talk about the Facebook thing, because I, I think maybe I'm uh, upset for no good reason. It turns out Facebook participated in a study, an interesting study, uh, about how what you see on social media affects your feelings. And it turns out that uh, in, I think it was January 2011, for one week, Facebook intentionally manipulated the news feeds for 700,000 users. They gave half of them uh, happy stories, half of them sad stories, and then a week later monitored their posts to see if they were happier or sadder. And surprise, surprise, people who saw depressing, sad stories were more depressed. And people who saw happy-go-lucky stories were happier. First of all, what a waste of time. That's obvious, but okay. This was, by the way, Cor Cornell was involved in this. Uh, I think uh, uh, California University involved in this study. Uh, experimental evidence of massive scale emotional contagion through social networks published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of the Sciences uh, of the USA. But Princeton University was uh, a woman who edited it from Princeton even said the creepy factor was off the scale here. Is it in normally in research when you do this kind of research, you get the consent of the subject. You may not say what you're going to do, but you say we're going to do a research study. Uh, just want to make sure it's okay with you. And when you don't, you have to get consent from a review board. That and this study did, which yeah, but you know what the review board was? It was Facebook's own review board. It was an in, it was a local <laughs> institutional review board. Oh, so it wasn't Facebook. I don't think it was Facebook. I think they they went through the proper How social did this happen? science channels. Don't you, you have to. Don't you feel to like published. this is incredibly invasive and yes. and and messed up? I want to use a stronger word, but I'll use the messed word. Messed up. Yes, I think it is, because how much different is this than the Stanley Milgram experiment, which was that was the messed impetus. Up. Yeah. That was the impetus of review boards that's why we have them is because when you manipulate someone's psyche to think the world is one way that it is not it has lasting effects on them even if it's something as stupid as your news feed this is as the researchers pointed out part of facebook's terms of service yeah. <laughs> and it that's is. what i was gonna say don't, yeah. don't anybody one think that it's illegal it's not I'm illegal sure they covered themselves on that front <laughs> Yes, this is this is what Facebook that said. And legality are two different yes. things. Yes, unethical right. maybe, legal absolutely. When users sign up for Facebook, they agree their information may be used for quote internal operations, including. I hope you read this carefully: troubleshooting, mm -hmm. data analysis, testing, research, 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 and service improvement. Uh, now, of course, the other point to be made is that Facebook is constantly manipulating the news feed in ways that we don't know. Who knows what the hell they're up to? This makes me want to quit Facebook so bad. And they did this two Again. years ago, which is also disconcerting to me. In, there was a statement posted just about an hour ago from one of the uh, data engineers from Facebook uh, kind of explaining things a little bit better and apologizing and saying that they wish that they had been a little bit more communicative and transparent for the reasoning. But he said, you know, we've learned a lot and grown a lot in the past two years, so we're better at this now. But still, there has been two years of this sort of activity, and that's I'm wondering what other studies are still in the pipeline and haven't even been published yet. Um, but I, I do agree that I think that they were not acting ethically here, but to play devil's advocate, how is this different than a website using an A-B test to decide which headline they should run for a given story? I'll throw that out there. Well, I can tell you one thing. Facebook got sued over Beacon. They're going to get sued over this. Good. I hope they do. I think they will. I mean, Professor James Grimmelman, who is far more knowledgeable about this sort of thing uh, than I would ever pretend to be, uh, has said, you know, if you're exposing people to something that causes changes in psychological status, that's experimentation and requires informed consent. Uh, should, anyway. So, I mean, he's just kind of spitballing as a law professor but if he's spitballing as a law professor there are plaintiffs lawyers out there who are putting it in pleadings and uh probably thinking about filing as a class does that action mean, i don't i, I that, mean because you wouldn't know it. if you were uh part of the seven hundred thousand, right how would you know that right uh if you're i just not, was though, really you're sad control. january 2011 <laughs> i was so sad for a week <laughs> 
<laughs> and all of my, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to go through and say, it, it, assuming you'd even have a record of what was I just shown think to this you on Facebook then. Is, uh, the only takeaway on this is a little peek under the curtain uh, at how Facebook runs its business, how they are ethically, how they feel about you as a Facebook user. And just, you know, understand we've learned something here. Uh, just... <laughs> I don't know. I always feel bad when I visit Facebook. I just feel crappy afterwards. I feel like I should take a shower. Do people think that A-B testing is a psychological experiment, too? Because ultimately you're trying to influence someone's psyche to get them to click. uh, And you're using different headlines to to basically influence their decision. It's no different than you go to a restaurant. The chef says, do you like this or this? Is where the uh, the eye doctor says A or B. It's just you giving somebody a choice. And the choice isn't explicitly requested or explicitly given but you just see, well, do people like this site or that site? That does not feel as manipulative as somebody modifying the news feed to try to make me happy or sad. That seems right. really and, messed And these up. researchers had to go to Facebook and say, our hypothesis is that, that it will. The, the emotional content of your Facebook feed will affect your emotional content, your emotional response. So we intend to manipulate this in order to elicit emotional responses from your participants and that is very different than just seeing what color looks best on your banner wouldn't you say i I don't know i mean isn't that the same thing as an editor going to to another editor saying i believe that if we change the headline to be this structure that we'll get more people to click on it so therefore let's run both using uh some optimizing software with a b testing capabilities and we'll see which one is more effective and therefore they're going to learn which is more effective again i'm playing devil's advocate here but i effective is a different thing because this these authors have specified to Facebook that we would like to emotionally manipulate your users and they said yes it's not a matter of which ones you know get the most clickbait which I agree does happen but when once Facebook you're got physically this, motivating got the user abstract, if they have to take the mouse then and they on should it. have said no well the good news is fewer than one tenth of one percent of the users committed suicide so it's okay <laughs> no, I don't know but that's a legitimate question what if somebody got so depressed they they, you know, they harmed themselves because of this stupid study. Then what's the liability? And, and there's one other thing out of this is that I'm not sure that they actually proved anything because if you need, you're seeing sad news, you might say, oh, I'm really sorry to hear about that. And then ultimately you right. are contributing you to their sad. research. But it doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. you're actually any sadder yourself. Right. Yeah, it's dumb. The whole thing is dumb. <laughs> and by the way, you mentioned, Natalie, I did quit Facebook once. I wish I weren't on Facebook, but I feel like I, I have to use it so I can report on stories like this. Yeah, I need yeah. to, I need to have an experience. I, so I'm taking the hit for you. How did this come to light? It for the team. I'm taking one for the team. I don't want to use Facebook. He's taking a profile for the team. You know what? I did give up, though, and I'm very proud of myself. That stupid Simpsons tapped out. <laughs> it's taken a while. It, well, it was, you know, I was really hooked on it for a while, and then the Electronic Arts crashed it, and I was actually relieved for six months I couldn't use it. Then all of a sudden, Lisa said, oh, your you're, you're tapped out seems to be back. I went, oh, no. Oh, no, they keep pulling me in. <laughs> and I, for the last month, it's been about a month, I've been doing it, and I realized that it's like an hour a day I'm farming and tapping. So I'm very proud of myself. I just deleted, and Lisa did too. We deleted our Simpsons tapped out because Farmville 2 is coming, and I really want to have room on the iPad. For, no, just kidding. <laughs> Here's, did someone out Facebook or did they out themselves on this research thing? The, the, the paper was published. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Somebody started reading this. And, what? You did what? Now yeah. all of the, you know, I think there will be more. Uh, we will hear more so, about this. You know, people need to vote with their feet if they don't want to be. Yeah, I would. I want to vote with my feet. I want to quit Facebook. I think this is ridiculous.